So the SI base units are kilograms, meters, seconds, kelvin, amps, moles, and candela. So actually, the reason this question is level one is because only one option is solely comprised of SI base units, and that is C. So that will be our answer. None of the other options are solely comprised of SI base units, and so therefore the answer can only be C. But actually deriving the SI base unit for resistance, let's say you weren't so fortunate to be given such simple options, um, that derivation is quite complex. There's quite a few equations you have to bring in. So I thought I'd show how you would derive that if you were given this in the non-multiple choice part of the exam. So we want to think about different equations that involve resistance. We have V is equal to IR, that's one equation. We have P is equal to I squared R. We have uh, P is equal to V squared over R as well. So we can rearrange any of these equations and then um, with the remaining quantities make substitutions by using different equations to eventually break down those quantities into SI base units. And I think the easiest one is this one, though none of them are particularly easy. So resistance is equal to power divided by I squared. And I squared is already in SI base units. We already have that being A squared, so that's handy. But power is not. Power is in watts, so we're going to have to use an equation to convert that. Power is equal to work done over time. And so for work done, we can use any equation for energy that we like. Uh, we can use mechanics stuff as well. We can use, we can use um, kinetic energy or, or gravitational potential energy or force times distance. So I'm going to use... I'm going to use gravitational potential energy. I think that's a decent one. MGH over T. So mass is kilograms. G is then meters. It's acceleration, so it'd be meters per second squared. It's acceleration due to gravity. H is height, so that's meters. And then all of that is divided by seconds. And when we simplify that, we end up with kilograms meters squared S to the minus 3. Um, so then we can put that here. This is kilograms meters squared s to the minus 3. That's all divided by a squared. So our final unit will then be kilograms meters squared s to the minus 3 a to the minus 2. And that is what we have in our answer, part C.